Hi kids, am I audible, visible? Hi. Hello. Am I audible, visible? Hello. Hi kids, welcome to Anacademy Neat English. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma and today we are going to talk about the enzymes. So this is the last lecture, right bache? So in detail we have covered the biomolecules. We are, uh, in first lecture we have covered the carbohydrates. In second lecture lipid, proteins, nucleic acids, they are covered. Amino acids, they are covered, right? And today we are going to finish the enzymes. And it is a very important topic. You know it very well and from the enzymes itself, one question can come in the NEET examination. So from today's lecture, you people can expect one to two questions directly, right? So today's session is for the eight marks, right, Bachi? Right? And tomorrow we have a marathon session and, uh, you know, many students requested me that, ma'am, please start structural organization in animals. So yes, tomorrow there will be a detailed marathon session on the structural organization in animals. So I hope to see you all there in that session, right? Okay. So let's start the lecture but before that of course i need to update i need to give you some updates so here you people can see just go to our channel that is an academy neat english of course so you can click on any video go to the description box and be the part of neat energized english batch right neat avengers batch is not available now it's neat energized english batch right bache and here in this batch what do you have to do see avenger coupon code is already applied just add your number and email you will get this batch at a price of 14999 okay so after every uh, week or 15 days you will get a mock test as well proper classes will be there and in biology very important topics we are discussing as of now okay Okay, so do not delay, bache. this is the right time, this is the right time to enroll in a batch and to cover the syllabus. Still, you people have time. And let me tell you, crash course is not going to help you if you do not have the uh, command over your syllabus, okay? Okay, so join it as soon as possible. Da? Join it as soon as possible, right, bache? And I hope you all have seen it. So see, bache, uh, today morning, I... Posted this, yes, I have uploaded this video, just have a look, tricks to master the plant kingdom, okay, it's tricks to master the plant kingdom, so here the video is just for 8 minutes guys and you guys can see that all the tricks, all the tricks to master the examples of plant kingdom are given here, so do check it after the class, fine. Do check it after the class and please like the video, share the video and in the comment section you know what you have to do. You just have to tell me you like it or not. So the next trick video will be on animal kingdom. Clear bache? So now let's start the lecture. Okay, take out your pen and paper and then start the lecture. Yes bache, I know plant kingdom part 2 is missing. I will take the session but not, not you know, uh, today or tomorrow. We'll take it. I cannot commit the date and time yet, but I will take it. Now I have seen so many students are asking for it. Ma'am, plan kingdom part 2. Ma'am, plan kingdom part 2. Right. But what about other chapters? What about other chapters? Huh? What about other chapters? Have you completed that? We have even discussed cell cycle. Right. Uh, we have covered. Uh, today we are going to finish biomolecules. So check that chapters two. Animal Kingdom is done. So all are asking for uh, Plant Kingdom part two. Plant Kingdom part two. What about others? Check that chapters. Don't worry, I will take Plant Kingdom part two as well. But uh, I cannot tell you the exact date and time. So tomorrow we will start on the structural organization in animals. Clear? Clear, bache? So hit the like button and let's start the class. So now for the quick revision, okay? So now you know that when we talk about the biomolecules, so as per NCRT, if I have to explain you this, so you know it very well. So uh, all the carbon containing compounds are the biomolecules, isn't it? All the carbon containing compounds, they are the biomolecules. This is what we know, right? So in the biomolecules, you know that we have divided it into two categories. One is biomicromolecules and another is biomacromolecule. So when they are biomacromolecule, their molecular weight, right? Their molecular 
uh, weight is above 10,000 Dalton and here it is less than 1,000 Dalton. So here we were talking about the monosaccharides. Even your disaccharides are also the part here, right? Your amino acids are also the part of bio micromolecules because their molecular weight is less and other than amino acids other than these monosaccharides your nucleosides your nucleotides they all are the part of bio micromolecule and even even lipids are also bio micromolecule it's just that because they are insoluble in water they form some vesicles so they are not in the right they are not in that filtrate they are in the retentate but ultimately lipids are also not polymeric they are also bio micromolecules so now now when it is bio macro molecule right we know we have covered the polysaccharides here right bache and uh, we have covered the proteins here proteins are also your bio macro molecule your nucleic acids also bio macro molecules isn't it isn't it this is what we have started so today in today's class our uh, main focus is on enzymes today we are going to finish the part enzymes right bachi but before that in the chapter biomolecule right if you read the ncrt your old ncrt you even talk about the metabolism okay you even talk about the metabolism so can you tell me what exactly is the metabolism yes can you tell me what exactly is the metabolism anyone in the class what do you understand by metabolism? Quick. What do you understand by metabolism? What do you know about metabolism? Quick. Answer it in the chat section and be quick. What do you understand by... Yes. What do you understand by metabolism? Uh, anabolism, catabolism, chemical reactions that takes place in our body. Okay, what else? What else? Firstly, I will explain you this part here and then we are going to read it from NCRT because there are two paragraphs, right? Uh, their meaning is very simple, but some uh, the language there is little difficult. So many times students, they are not able to understand that properly. So I will explain it from the NCRT directly. So see, when you talk about the metabolism, right? So obviously here we are talking about the chemical reactions which are going on in our body. Of course, we are talking about the chemical reactions which are taking place in our body. You know that metabolism is a defining property, isn't it? In the case of living organisms, what is it? It is the defining property. What is it, Bache? It is the defining property. Okay, okay. So, metabolism and living organism. Metabolism and a cell is living. These two things are considered as synonyms right these two these two things are considered as synonyms synonyms means they are having same meanings if something is living if a cell is living definitely chemical reactions are there definitely metabolism is going on because this metabolism is providing us the energy it is helping us to do day-to-day -day activities for the survival okay so metabolism may what are we going to consider we are talking about the chemical reactions here so metabolism may there are two things one is anabolism one is anabolism and second thing is catabolism. One is anabolism, second thing is catabolism. Now, cata, cata, cut. This is how you have to remember it. Cata, cut to break something. Okay, cata, cut to break something, right? To break something means here you are going to talk about the breakdown. So, when we say catabolic reactions, like your respiration, it's a catabolic reactions breakdown is there right breakdown is there now when you are talking about the anabolism obviously it means build up then right what is the meaning of anabolism it means build up then so build up and break down build up and break down this is going on in our body and this is how the chemical reactions are going on in our body and that is why we are living because we are getting energy from all these processes take it now in a living body you know that biomolecules are present so ultimately but these biomolecules they show a kind of turnover right here we are going to discuss some words like metabolic flux right metabolic flux i will explain each and everything so when you are saying biomolecules when you are saying biomolecules now but one type of biomolecule will get converted into another type ultimately this will happen in our body right 
it is going to happen in our body right there is a line in ncrt that in the living organisms right steady state is there but that is basically basically in non equilibrium right steady state is there in our living body but there is a kind of non equilibrium there is a non equilibrium in our body living system may we will not talk about the equilibrium you are going to talk about the non equilibrium but there is a steady state so many times students are not able to understand it so this is what we need to understand now so i hope the catabolism and anabolism is clear to you now i'm saying in body in a living body one form of biomolecule will get converted into another there is a breakdown there is a build up one form will form another right for an example if i talk about the glycolysis you know that there will be the breakdown of glucose so glucose is going to form two pyruvic acid isn't it glucose is going to form two pyruvic acid so glucose which is a six carbon containing compound pyruvic acid which is a three carbon containing compound so six carbon containing compound glucose is going to give us right it is going to give us two compounds having three carbon so one form will get converted into another this pyruvate will form something else right right this pyruvate like it will go further it will form the acetyl coenzyme a as well then again it will form something else so one form will get converted into another another form will get converted into another some things will join they will form something else some there will be the breakdown that will form something else so this will happen in this living body in this living system so whenever you are talking about the metabolic reactions they are always interlinked right what are they they are always interlinked okay you cannot say that there is a you know kind of straight road that we have to follow okay just say in the ncrt also this example is given you talk about the traffic you talk about the traffic in the cities we have different different roads different different bridges are there some roundabouts are there right so it is properly managed now that this is how we have to go roads are also interrelated same is the case here these metabolic reactions are not like that no doubt in our syllabus we discussed that initially there will be glycolysis we will get the pyruvate so if it is the aerobic respiration this will go for the oxidative decarboxylation then comes the krab cycle then comes the electron transport chain no doubt we study it in this way right right that there will be one process then second then third but actually it is not like that all the processes they are interrelated clear all the processes they are interrelated this is what this metabolism is that is how these reactions are going to work is that clear yes or no is that clear quick bache is it clear that is how these reactions are going to work clear clear bache clear so one form will get converted into another so ultimately it is going to remain same right so such flux we are going to see in the living body so now let's understand it from the ncrt take it so the first paragraph given here is the dynamic state of body constitutes the concept of metabolism dynamic state of body constitutes what is the word here arthi the word here is dynamic state of body constitutes the concept of metabolism so see one by one we need to understand it from the ncrt only right so you know that whenever you talk about the living organism even if you are talking about the bacteria or a protozoan or a plant and animal cell like you can take the example of a prokaryotic cell you can take the example of a eukaryotic cell you can take the example of a multicellular organism you can take the example of a unicellular organism we know thousands of organic compounds are present is it clear there are thousands of organic compounds which are making a living body yes or no yes or no so these are what these are the biomolecules and obviously they are present in certain concentrations like they are expressed as moles per cell okay or moles per liter there are different different units for it of course so now the next part is that one of the greatest discovery ever made was the observation that these biomolecules they are having a turnover right so bachche yes mcq can come from this part right they are saying biomolecules are having a turnover so ultimately this is what you need to keep in your head that one form will get converted into another right one form will get converted into another like they are constantly being changed into some other biomolecules and also made from some other biomolecule so this part clear question can come from this part quickly guys right please revert in the chat section quick 
done so the next part is this breaking and making of bonds you know that it is the metabolism right you know that it is the metabolism so whenever you talk about the metabolic reactions they results in the transformation of biomolecules right they are they are changing that biomolecules clear bache right so turnover means one form is getting changed into another so metabolic reactions are going on there so here we have some examples please keep these examples in your head bache the question can come from this part so few examples are removal of co2 from amino acids making an amino acid make converting an amino acid into amine this question can be asked in the paper of course right if i will be your examiner and if i have to ask you a question definitely i will ask this question i will ask this line in the form of a reaction that you are removing you are removing co2 from an amino acid what will you get you will get an amine okay you will get an amine so yes this line can be asked as a question so yes it is our mcq done so removal of amino group in a nucleotide base again a metabolic reaction hydrolysis of glycosidic bond in a disaccharide right you know this example break the lactose right you will get glucose and galactose so you are ultimately right you are ultimately converting a disaccharides into two monosaccharides and that two monosaccharides when they will join they will form that single disaccharide so ultimately one form is getting converted into another one form is getting converted into another got it yes everyone got it clear is it clear okay so we can list tens and thousands of such example so majority of these metabolic reactions they do not occur in isolation but they are always linked to some other reaction so bache statement based questions can come from this part okay statement based questions can come from this part so all the metabolites right the compounds which are taking part in that metabolism that intermediates which are taking part in that metabolism we use the word metabolites for it so in other words metabolites are converted into each other in a series of linked reaction called metabolic pathways right called metabolic pathways clear bachche so these metabolic pathways are similar to the automobile traffic i told you already right right bache theek hai so all that obviously they there are they cross each other so there are traffic junctions so we know it theek hai we know it so now this line is very important that flow of metabolites through metabolic pathway has a definite rate and the direction like automobile traffic this is what you need to mark okay the question can come from this part okay the question can come from this part so these metabolites i know these reactions are interrelated all the reactions are interrelated here so we are saying that these metabolites they are having a right definite rate and direction proper rate and direction is also there right rate and direction both are present so bachche yes mcq can come from this part okay question can come from this part done bachche so that is why that is why we are saying that these metabolite flow is the dynamic state of the body constituent so there is a proper rate proper direction is there so this is actually the dynamic state when you are talking about these body constituents is that clear yes is it clear bachche is it clear okay so see it's a very lovely example that what is more important right when there is the interlinked metabolic traffic how can we make it smooth right and without a single reported mishap for healthy conditions so simply obviously if all the reactions are working properly then we are in a healthy state simple as that okay we are in a healthy state okay so now in the living body when you talk about these metabolic reactions this is what you need to keep in your head that always these reactions are catalyzed right a catalysis will be used here fine a catalysis will be used here right and when you talk about the living system living reaction which catalyst will be there the bio catalyst is your enzymes enzymes are what they are the bio catalyst so in living system there is no reaction without enzymes right so outside the body there are some reactions which will take place without enzymes but in our living body all the reactions all the reactions they need the enzymes is that clear they need the enzymes so a very wonderful example is given here that even carbon dioxide dissolving in water it's a physical process right but in living system even this reaction is a catalyzed reaction okay 
carbon dioxide when you try to dissolve it in water it's a simple physical process but in living system we need the enzymes like let me give you the example of human body so carbon dioxide and water remember which is carbonic acid isn't it h2co3 is it carbonic or bicarbonic what is it i hope you remember we discuss it in human physiology so you need carbonic anhydrase for it which enzyme is required carbonic anhydrase is required so co2 plus water you will get the carbonic acid and then obviously you will dissociate it enzymes are required so outside the body the process is simple without enzyme but in living system the reactions are always catalyst is that clear uh, always catalyzed is that clear yes bachche so the catalyst what will what is the role of that catalyst it will hasten the rate of the given metabolic reaction means it will speed up the rate of the reaction okay it will speed up that con uh, that conver conversation Co right conversion basically right it will basically speed up that conversion fine 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 so these proteins with catalytic power they are what they are the enzyme so that is what you need to keep in your head so mark my word from this paragraph yes question can come so please please make the notes that whenever there is a removal of carbon dioxide from amino acid we are going to get the amine okay we are going to get the amine and whenever we talk about the metabolic reactions they have the definite rate and direction they have the definite rate and the direction this is another important mcq clear bachche this is another important mcq the third mcq is that in living system always all the reactions are what they are catalyzed they need a catalysis and biocatalyst is our enzyme okay fine done bachche so next is metabolic basis for living again it is important you know sometimes what happen like uh, what we used to do normally uh just i will explain you the topic you will be like now i know the biomolecule but i have to do i have to just practice the mcqs theek hai good thing because in my lecture i am even including the ncert screenshots but bachche reading ncert is very very important right reading ncert is actually very important see when you read ncert by your own maybe now i have explained you something you are you are sure that you know that right that okay i am able to understand it but maybe later on you are not okay so after the class always make it a habit that theek hai today ma'am today she has completed enzymes so i have to read it from ncert then i have to solve the question theek hai so lecture ncert question practice this is what you need to follow okay this is what you need to follow so now metabolic pathways you know that they can lead to a more complex structure from a simpler structure of course of course so here we have another mcq hanji chamchir here we have another mcq that acidic acid is going to form the cholesterol right maybe this this single statement can can come as a question in your paper so what are they saying that with the help of these metabolic reactions one we can convert one compound into another that's what i said we can convert one compound into another so your acidic acid can form the cholesterol okay acetic acid can form the cholesterol another important mcq fine and it can lead to a simpler structure from a complex structure right so your glucose can become lactic acid in can form lactic acid in our skeletal system right in our muscles when we work right uh, when you do a lot of exercise and all you feel the muscle cramps why because glucose is getting converted into the lactic acid and that lactic acid is responsible for what it is responsible for that fatigue okay it is responsible for that fatigue so fatigue is nothing it is just the accumulation of the lactic acid okay it is just the accumulation of the lactic acid clear bachche so in the first in the first process acetic acid is forming cholesterol there is a build up so it is the anabolic process and when there is the breakdown of glucose into lactic acid it is going to be your catabolic process so ultimately in metabolism we discuss both the things so now what what points you need to write note down so when it is the anabolism the build up you are trying to make something obviously you need energy right obviously you need energy energy is required isn't it energy is required isn't it and when there is the breakdown when there is the catabolism when there is the breakdown when there is the catabolism energy energy is released clear bachche the energy is released is that clear are you getting it so catabolism energy will be released 
anabolism energy will be utilized clear bachche clear bachche so here in ncrt they have given when glucose is degraded to lactic acid in our skeletal system energy is liberated so this metabolic pathway actually bachche here it is given na see i always pointed out in old ncrt it is given that glucose is getting converted to lactic acid so it's a 10 step process it is the glycolysis actually it is not when glucose when we convert glucose into 2 pyruvate right it is a 10 step process actually it is a 10 step process and it is the glycolysis here it should be pyruvic acid or pyruvate not lactic acid or lactate clear bache clear bache so this is what you need to take care done bache so living organisms okay so now as and when needed this bond energy so basically now the energy will be released when there is the chemical reaction when there is the release of energy we need to store that energy okay and you know that in our body that energy currency is atp that is as adenosine triphosphate what is it that is adenosine triphosphate so living organism they have learned to trap this energy liberated during degradation and stored in the form of the chemical bonds so as and when needed this bond energy is utilized for biosynthetic osmotic and mechanical work that we perform and you know that that energy currency is what it is adenosine triphosphate that is your atp okay it is adenosine triphosphate that is your atp clear bache? that is adenosine triphosphate that is your atp clear yes or no okay so in bioenergetics we understand these things that you know how that energy will be utilized how can we use this bond energy and all so this is what you need to keep in your head so i hope up to this part everything is clear to you now the next important line that we need to understand here is this this one okay this one done bache sure clear clear so the living state so when you talk about a living body right you know that you know that we are made up of you know many metabolites in our in our body so many chemical reactions are there so it means so many metabolites are there hey na? so many metabolites are there isn't it isn't it these metabolites are nothing they are the biomolecules which are taking part in that reactions right which are taking part in that reaction like here one example is given the blood concentration of glucose in a normal healthy individual is 4.5 to 5 ml right while that of hormones would be in nanograms so yes in our body as per the need in our body as per the need different different metabolites are there different different intermediates are there and even their quantity their concentration it varies so when you talk about the hormones they are required in very less quantity they are required in minute quantities right but so we it will be in hormones will be there in nanograms or in milliliter nanograms per milliliter clear bache clear bache some things will be there like mm right millimeters like it varies the unit can vary it depends upon the need fine that it depends upon the need so the most important factor biological system is that all living organism now this point is very important all living organism they exist in a steady state characterized by concentrations of each these biomolecules right they exist in a steady state what do you understand by the word steady state anyone here in the class yes what do you understand by the word steady state anyone steady means which is unchanged for a long time something which is unchanged for a long time that is unchanged for a long time isn't it that is the steady state right bache? right so all these biomolecules they are present in this state but yes here there will be the non-equilibrium let me explain so i'm reading this line again the most important factor of biological system is that all living organism they exist in a steady state characterized by concentration of each of these biomolecules like whenever you talk about the concentration of these biomolecules the amount of hormones there or you know some other compound which is required there right whatever it is whatever it is right so you will see that their concentration is in a steady state concentration is in a steady state means the concentration is unchanged for a long time 
okay it is unchanged for a long time try to understand the meaning here right try to understand the meaning here so these biomolecules are in a metabolic flux like their quantity will remain same it's just that they will get converted into one form to another right like again i will give you one example glucose which is a single six carbon containing compound from this glucose you are making two pyruvic acids so ultimately right ultimately bache this one is six carbon this one is three carbon so from one six carbon containing compound you are getting two three carbon containing compound so ultimately ultimately right it remains same na from six carbon you are getting something which is again having six carbon but in a different way right but in a different way so that is the point here okay so there is a kind of this turnover is there one form is getting changed into another right and the quantities will remain in steady state and for this we use this term that is it is in the metabolic flux clear bachche it is in the metabolic flux is that clear is that clear so any chemical or physical process moves spontaneously to the equilibrium that's a fact i hope you know this right you can talk about subhashini any chemical process you can talk about any of the physical process ultimately it will try to attain the equilibrium it will try to attain the equilibrium right but here in the living state always remember in the living body you will always get the state non equilibrium state which state you are going to get you are always going to get the non equilibrium state okay which state you are going to get you are going to get the non equilibrium state clear clear now what is the meaning of this one thing we are saying is ki yes there will be the steady state and another word that we are using here is non equilibrium now what is the meaning here which is steady state when you talk about the concentration that concentration will remain unchanged or these biomolecules can get converted into one form to another but ultimately the quantity the concentration will remain same and in a living body right living body will always try to maintain non equilibrium state we after our death we attain the equilibrium right right when our system is not working when a cell is dead then it attains the equilibrium otherwise it is always a non equilibrium state so always living body will be in a state where it will do some work right work done should be there always are you getting it work done should be there always clear clear so that is why it is written that the steady state is a non equilibrium state when you talk about the when you talk about the living body so one should remember from physics that system at equilibrium cannot perform work work done is zero here but in living system without work done we are nothing so always it will try to attain the state of non equilibrium so after death we attain the state of equilibrium is that clear is that clear so that is why living organisms even when they are sleeping they work continuously they cannot afford to reach equilibrium so the living state is a non equilibrium steady state which is able to perform the work so i hope the meaning of this line is clear to you right it's important it's important done so living process is a constant effort to prevent falling into the equilibrium so obviously it will be achieved by energy input okay right and the chemical reactions are going to provide that energy so that is why it is written that living state and metabolism they are synonyms okay okay so no metabolism means we are not living we are dead fine no metabolism means we are not living we are dead that's all so this is what you need to remember and i according to me this part is very interesting right and you never pay attention to these lines that okay acetic acid can form the cholesterol if co2 will be removed from the amino acid it can it can form the amine so yes you should focus there bache in the because ultimately it is given in ncert so of course the question can come in paper right so next point that we need to discuss is enzymes okay what are we going to discuss we are going to talk about the enzymes which are bio catalyst right they are what they are bio catalyst enzyme bio catalyst now see even in the chemistry you talk about the chemical reactions isn't it even in the chemistry we talk about the catalyst so what is the role of this catalyst first of all let's talk about it catalyst catalyst is something which is going to increase the rate of reaction it is going to increase the rate of reaction but it cannot start the reaction right right it is not like a catalyst is going to start a chemical reaction never ever never ever catalyst will just speed it up it is going to increase the rate it is going to increase the 
rate. So when you talk about the catalyst, it is something which will increase the rate of the reaction, right? Which will increase the rate of the reaction. It cannot start the reaction by its own, okay? But it will increase the rate of the reaction. So when you talk about the catalyst, so we have an inorganic catalysts also and we have enzymes. So now you know that enzymes are biocatalysts. They are obtained from a living body, right? So obviously they, they are organic in nature, isn't it? They are organic in nature. So this is what we need to discuss. Right. So catalyst is something which will increase the rate of the reaction and during that reaction it it's qualitatively or quantitatively it will not change. Right. Remember this. Whenever you talk about a catalyst it is going to speed up the rate of the uh, it is going to speed up the rate of a particular reaction. It is not the one which will start the reaction. Right. And during the course of that reaction the catalyst will remain unaffected qualitatively as well as as quantitatively. So after the reaction we can get that catalyst again and over the time we can use it again. Okay. So it is just speeding up the reaction. It is not directly participating there in reaction. It's not like that after the reaction you will not get your catalyst back. You will get it and you can use it again and again. Is that clear? Is that clear? So when it is the inorganic catalyst, so we have two things, inorganic catalyst and the enzymes as well. Inorganic catalyst and the enzymes as well. Clear bache? Clear bache? Yes, so let me tell you a few points. Inorganic catalyst and of course the another one is enzymes. So enzymes are definitely, they are what? They are organic in nature. This is inorganic in nature, this is organic in nature, right? Right? So, uh, firstly let's compare. So, inorganic catalyst, one point is same. Inorganic in nature, another is organic. And here, they are the simple molecules having low molecular weight, right? Whenever you talk about the inorganic catalysts, they are the simple molecules. They are the simple molecules having low molecular weight. Is that clear? Having low molecular weight but here what will you see they are complex right they are complex molecule and having high molecular weight so if they are having high molecular weight so of course but they are also the part of bio macromolecules isn't it they are also the part of bio macromolecule isn't it let me explain this part so see but enzymes bio catalyst most of the enzymes are protein, okay. Most of the enzymes are proteins. Now, do you remember when I was explaining you the structure of proteins at that time we were discussing that they have their primary structure, they have their secondary structure, they have the tertiary structure, isn't it? That they have the tertiary structure. So now I'm saying that most of the enzymes, what are they? They are the proteins and which form, which structure is there? It is actually that 3D structure, that three dimensional structure means that tertiary structure, right? It means that tertiary structure. Are you getting it? It is that tertiary structure. Okay, so enzymes, most of the enzymes are proteins. So which structure of protein is uh, biologically active? You know that that is the tertiary structure. Hey na? That is the tertiary structure which is biologically active. So 110% it is having high molecular weight. Right? Now, as I said, most of the enzymes are proteins. Means, so some nucleic acids, like your RNA also acts as an enzyme, you know, sometimes nucleic acids like your RNA. It's a very important question. Nucleic acids like your RNA acts as an enzyme. It acts as an enzyme and we used to call it as ribozyme. Fine, we used to call it as ribozyme. So when your RNA, it acts as an enzyme. That is known as a ribozyme. But mostly enzymes are proteins. But RNA can also act as an enzyme. That is ribozyme. So we uh, discussed it. We discuss it in the case of you know uh, translation. We have one example: peptidyl transferase. 
right there is one enzyme peptidyl transferase so in the large subunit of ribosome this peptidyl transferase is present so it is actually the ribo uh, it is actually the ribozyme here the rna is acting as an enzyme is that clear the rna is acting as an enzyme clear bache the rna is acting as an enzyme done so you talk about any of the cell now in a living body when in a multicellular living body just keep it in your mind right the enzymes cannot transfer they cannot cross like let's say if this is a cell here we have some enzymes so that enzymes cannot cross the plasma membrane they cannot move to the cell nearby why because their molecular weight is high they cannot cross that plasma membrane so each and every cell it synthesizes its own enzyme okay it is going to synthesize its own enzyme so enzyme is ultimately a catalyst so all the points are same that they will just speed up the rate of the reaction they cannot they just cannot you know start the reaction by its own so during the course of reaction qualitatively and quantitatively they will not be affected after the reaction we can get that catalyst as such we can get that enzyme as such and we can use it again and again okay we can use it again and again so that points are same ultimately okay so now when i'm comparing inorganic and organic one thing is clear simple having low molecular weight complex having high molecular weight now here inorganic uh, catalyst they can withstand you know they can withstand high temperature and ph right they can withstand high temperature and ph means in their case no doubt specificity is there but not that much and they can even tolerate high temperature and ph but here they will become inactive enzymes will become inactive if ph and temperature is if ph and temperature is not optimum if they will not get their best temperature not get the optimum conditions they will not be functional right your enzymes will not be functional is that clear is that clear yes bachche yes and moreover inorganic catalyst they catalyze they catalyze non biological reactions which are not the part of living system right and your uh, enzymes they catalyst biological reactions okay they are going to catalyst biological reactions so inorganic catalyst can catalyze diverse reactions right different different type of reactions they can catalyze so obviously they are less specific specificity is not that much but they are enzymes are very specific clear bachche they are very specific so these are the differences and being a catalyst the common points are going to be same here so any doubt yes bachcho do you have any doubt here quick any doubt here done so can we start the next part can we start the next part so let's read it from ncert first let's revise it from ncert first so here you guys can see that almost all enzymes are protein almost all enzymes are protein but there are some nucleic acids right that behaves like enzymes and that are the ribosomes so your rna is acting as an enzyme clear bachche so one can depict an enzyme by a line diagram right so any enzyme like any protein has a primary structure amino acid sequence of course so basically when you talk about the enzymes na as i said this is the three dimensional structure but you know how that 3d structure will form first of all it will be a linear structure right linear amino acids are present it is the primary structure then slowly slowly the coiling will occur it will become secondary then further coiling will occur bachche further coiling will occur and you will get the tertiary structure and and right right after that coiling when we get right that tertiary structure so here in the backbone of the structure right you will see secondary or tertiary form you will see that amino acids ka uh, a backbone of that amino acids okay okay and during this folding right in this biologically active form right we will see some sites right we will see some pockets here what are we going to see we will see some sites right we will see some pockets here so we used to call it as crevices what is it these are the crevices these are the sites these are the sites these are the pockets to which substrate can join right 
right to which substrate can join so th that is the beauty of this folded structure so it is folded some crevices are formed right some crevices are formed some sites are formed to which the substrate is going to join and ultimately enzyme will break the bond will form the new bond and will convert that substrate into the product okay it will convert that substrate into the product so that's how it works so here you guys can see an enzyme like any protein is having secondary and tertiary structure but when you look at the ter tertiary structure you will see the backbone of protein chain folds upon itself i told you all already right so the chain criss crosses itself and they will form crevices or pockets is that clear they will form crevices and pockets right bache so one such pocket there will be many different pockets so one such pocket is active site so when you use the word active site it means the crevices or pocket to which the substrate fits right the crevices or pocket to which the substrate fits that's the point here okay that's the point here done bachche so enzymes with the help of their active sites right they will bind to substrate they will catalyze the reaction right they will increase the rate of the reaction fine bachche they will increase the rate of the reaction so here in this paragraph you know they have mentioned the difference in inorganic and the Uh, enzyme catalyst. I told you already, bache. Right. So you know that our enzymes are highly specific. They need the optimum temperature and pH. When the temperature is high, they can even get denatured. Okay. They can even get denatured, as I said. What is going to happen here? They will get denatured because enzymes are proteins. So when there is increase in that temperature, denaturation can occur. okay the structure the tertiary structure will get changed into secondary or primary and then they will lose their biological activity fine bachche they will lose their biological activity done so enzymes isol right so mostly enzymes right they get damaged when the temperature is above 40 degrees celsius fine when the temperature is above 40 degrees celsius they get denatured but bachche we have one more example one more example of archi bacteria right we have one more example of archi bacteria so archi bacteria is a primitive bacteria clear bachche and this is the bacteria which can survive in harsh conditions okay it can survive in harsh conditions clear bachche clear bachche so in the case of archi bacteria right we have thermoacidophiles as well which can survive under high temperature and acid uh, under uh, high acidity right so sometimes what happened some enzymes they are obtained from the archi bacteria like i'll give you one example there is one bacteria thermo thermophilus aquaticus right it is also known as thermus aquaticus okay it is thermophilus aquaticus or thermus aquaticus from this enzyme we used to, from this bacteria we used to get one polymerase that is your tac polymerase right what is the name of the enzyme it's tac polymerase t stands for thermus aq stands for aquaticus okay thermus aquaticus or thermophilus aquaticus so it is an archi bacteria we can get this enzyme tac polymerase from this archi bacteria and this enzyme can be used for the dna synthesis in polymerase chain reaction okay in polymerase chain reaction clear bachche so this tac polymerase can survive it can work under high temperature conditions okay under high temperature conditions like you can say that it can withstand the high temperature uh, which is even above 90 degree celsius okay so it can efficiently work when the temperature is in between 70 to 90 or 95 to 97 this enzyme can work clear bachche tac polymerase so from this part you can understand that thermal stability okay thermal stability right right it's a very important feature of the enzymes it is written here so enzymes isolated from the organisms who normally live under extremely high temperatures right bachche like in hot winds in sulfur springs they are stable right they retain their catalytic power even under high temperatures why bachche right uh, because they have this property of thermal stability so thermal stability is very important enzyme uh, property in the case of thermophilic organisms that's all right that's all so now as per ncrt we have to proceed today next part is chemical reactions okay next part is what it is the chemical reaction so up to this part all clear or do you have any doubt yes do you have any doubt here
श्योर ओके सो केमिकल रिएक्शन राइट सो केमिकल कंपाउंड बच्चे देखें अंडर गो टू टाइप्स ऑफ चेंजेस वन इज द फिजिकल चेंज वेयर देर इज द चेंज इन द शेप ओनली right there is no breaking and making of bonds it's just the shape which will change okay so this is a physical process now another physical process is the change in the state of matter right like ice is melting into water water is forming the vapors again it is a physical process but when you talk about the chemical reactions when you talk about the chemical processes here bachche we will see that the new bonds will form and some old bonds they will broke right they will break as well isn't it they will break as well like here uh, it is barium hydroxide isn't it this is sulfuric acid so it will form barium uh, sulfate and the water right one chemical reaction is given here na it is an inorganic chemical reaction fine so here the making and the breaking of bond is involved so like hydrolysis of starch into glucose it is an organic chemical reaction so what we need to what we need to understand here that rate of physical as well as chemical process it refers to the amount of product formed per unit rate per unit time right right so whenever we use the word rate rate of a reaction so we see the formation of product in a given time right in the unit time how much product you are getting from a substrate this is what the rate is so here you can see change in product per unit time that is what rate is okay that is what rate is so rate is also compared with the velocity right why is it so why is it so bachche i just told you because there is a specific rate the direction is also mentioned there remember speed and direction we are considering both direction is also considered so rate can also be called velocity because the direction is specified fine because the direction is specified then bachche so yes temperature and some other factors are going to affect this rate there is a general thumb rule bachche that if that with every 10 degree celsius change in temperature right if with every 10 degree celsius change in temperature this can affect the rate of a chemical reaction like if there is the increase okay it can even double the rate of the reaction and it can even reduce it to the half fine right it can even reduce it to the half right so general rule of thumb that rate doubles or decreases by half rate doubles or decreases by half for every 10 degree change in either direction important clear bachche even it is important then how to memorize reaction practice it write it again and again right so catalyzed reaction they proceed at a rate higher than that of uncatalyzed one i'll give you one example jaise do you know about the reactions per oxy enzymes per oxidases catalases do you know about these enzymes per oxidases catalases both these enzymes are present in a micro body right right micro bodies are that small organelles which are present in a cell like peroxisome in the peroxisome you are going to get both the enzymes your peroxidases as well ha huh. your peroxidases as well your catalases as well right both the enzymes are present here the peroxidases as well the catalases as well so when you talk about this enzyme peroxidase and the catalase right per oxidase and the catalase so per oxidase sp per oxidase sp it is the smallest enzyme and this catalase is the largest enzyme okay this one is the smallest enzyme and this one is the largest enzyme clear bachche per oxidase and catalase both are present in peroxisome you know na peroxisome is a small organelle it's a micro body right right it is going to break that h2o2 hydrogen peroxide and your carbonic anhydrase right your carbonic anhydrase it is the fastest enzyme do you know that it is the fastest enzyme and atpas atpas is what it is the slowest enzyme right it is the slowest enzyme so you guys can note it down Then, bache. So here we have the reaction CO two plus H two O in the presence of carbonic anhydrase. You will get carbonic acid H two CO three. Okay. So in the absence of any enzyme, the reaction is very slow, right? Like see, without, ha, huh, you know, without the enzyme, two hundred molecules of this carbonic acid they being formed in an hour, 
right? So if we are not using enzyme, in one hour you will get 200 molecules of carbonic acid. But when we use the enzyme, bache, so right, the speed increases dramatically with about 6 lakh molecules being formed every second. Just imagine, in one hour, 200 molecules. But now in every second, we are getting 6 lakh molecules. Okay, bache? so the rate has accelerated by about 10 million times. So that's the beauty of enzyme. So see, even in our digestive system, we will not get uh, enzymes. Now, you know, our food can even take two to three months, even more than that for the digestion. Okay, and even it is believed when we related with the evolution, even it is believed, bache, that after the after the evolution of enzymes, like some people believe in RNA word concept, some people believe in protein word concept. So as for RNA word concept, it is the RNA which came first. Now you know that RNA is a nucleic acid as well, but RNA is also acting as an enzyme. Right, RNA is also acting as an enzyme. It is working like an enzyme. So what is going to happen in the case of that RNA? Right, right, that has started increasing the rate of the reaction. Right, and which will increase the speed obviously, rate. Right, this is the, what the rate is. So, if enzymes are not even there in our digestive system, we cannot even digest the food for many months. So, enzymes are that important. And that is why in living system, all the enzymes are the catalyzed one. Right, they are the catalyzed one. So, this is what you need to keep in your head. This data is important. Right, Bache? This data is important. Done. So, you know that in the living body, so many reactions are there. Uh, and uh, so many enzymes are also there. So, enzymes cannot cross the cell membrane they have high molecular weight so each cell as per its requirement it is going to form its own enzyme okay so enzymes are ultimately proteins so dna is going to form that done so few reactions are given here but they say glucose is forming two pyruvic acid i told you this is glycolysis the very first step of respiration which is common in both anaerobic and aerobic respiration Right, and here you can see C6H2LO6, your glucose, it is oxidized, right, and you are getting C3H4O3, like basically it is showing that alcoholic fermentation, fine, alcoholic fermentation, done, bache? done, so the first step, see, glucose is forming pyruvic acid in 10, so it's a 10 step process, 10 different enzymes are required, right, 10 different enzymes are required, done, bache? Done. So here glucose is forming this. Ah, glucose is forming this ethanol. Glucose is forming this ethanol, which is basically uh no, it is not ethanol. Yes, it is C3H. Okay, okay, okay. So yes, glucose is forming, right? Your lactic acid. Even ethanol is also there in the case of yeast. Fine, ethanol is also there in the case of yeast. Ethanol is what? Two carbon containing compound, it is, it is, it is, right? Two carbon containing compound. I hope you remember, na, jase, when we talk about the respiration, the first step is glycolysis, breakdown of glucose. So that pyruvate can have two fates. If oxygen is available, then it will go for the crab cycle. Okay, then it will go for the crab cycle. But if oxygen is not available, it will go for the fermentation. So when it comes to the fermentation, one is lactic acid, lactic acid fermentation, lactic acid will be formed. In the case of animal cells, especially in the case of muscles, and second is alcoholic fermentation. Second is alcoholic fermentation. So here it is not alcoholic, here it is the lactic acid form. Right? Lactic acid fermentation. Why? Because CO2 is not released. Okay. So when it is the alcoholic fermentation, we will see that even the CO2 will also release. Clear, Bache? Clear? So that's it, that's all. So here we can see the role of the enzymes. Now we have to understand the mechanism here that how do enzymes be, bring about such high rates of the chemical conversions. Clear, bache? So we are about to end it in, yes, we will end this topic in I think we need next, we need 20 minutes to finish the chapter, okay? Okay, we need next 20 minutes to finish the chapter. So listen to me carefully. Now, uh, yes. You know that ultimately what is going to happen? Uh, substrate will form the product. Hana? Ultimately, this is the meaning of a chemical reaction. Even in chemistry, we talk about the reactants. They are forming the product. And the enzymes are used. And the enzymes are used. But how are they going to work? But they are going to lower down the activation energy. How these enzymes are going to help? They are going to lower down the activation energy this is what you need to remember what will they do they will lower down 
the activation energy this is important now what is the meaning of activation energy what is the meaning of activation energy it is the minimum amount of energy which is required to convert the reactant into the product or to the substrate into the product let me repeat it again it is the minimum amount of energy which is required to break that energy barrier by which your reactant will get converted into the product it's not like that we want the substrate to form the product and substrate will form it no energy demand is there energy demand is there so if i need to convert the substrate to product right let's say right the diagram is very bad but here try to understand it let's say here you have the substrate here you have the product if i need to form product from the substrate this is the wall that i need to jump right this is the wall that i need to jump if i have to convert the substrate into the product right so now let's say if this wall if it is having less height so obviously immediately right see compare these two structures just compare these two structures here the height is more right so obviously the conversion of substrate to product will take time the conversion of substrate to product will take time and here the height is comparatively less okay the height of this wall is comparatively less so substrate will form the product immediately substrate will form the product immediately so now here i am showing you this wall you can consider this wall as the energy barrier right you can consider it as the energy barrier right the minimum energy barrier which we need so that we can convert the substrate into the product this is the activation energy okay this is the activation energy so obviously if this activation energy is low right if the activation energy is low obviously you will get the product immediately from the substrate okay so if the activation energy is high so it will take time to get that product so fine so enzymes what are they going to do bachche what are they going to do they are going to lower down the activation energy fine they are going to lower down the activation energy is that clear yes bachche is that clear yes or no so it is the minimum amount of energy it is the minimum amount of energy fine required to overcome it is the minimum amount of energy which is required to overcome the energy barrier of reactants to overcome the minimum amount of energy required to overcome the energy barrier of reactants to form the right uh, to form the products or simply you can say that reactants to make them active for a chemical change you can write it in any way right so when reactants will become active for the chemical change means they have overcome that energy barrier they are ready to make the product so that is how the enzymes are going to help fine that is how the enzymes are going to help clear bachche so they will do what they are going to lower down the activation energy fine they are going to lower down the activation energy right just a minute so let's say here on x axis we have the progress of reaction fine and here on this y axis we have the potential energy see so let's say this is the potential energy of your substrate this is the potential energy of your product right this is the potential energy of your substrate this is the potential energy of your product bachche right so this part here is just a minute this part here is it is the transition state okay this is the transition state let me explain you this wait 
so what is it it is the transition state right it is the transition state now let's say yes let's say here uh now this part right let's say this is the this is the activation energy without enzyme okay it is the activation energy without enzyme and this this is the activation energy with enzyme so enzymes are going to do what they are going to lower down the they are going to lower down the uh, they are going to lower down the activation energy so obviously when the enzyme it will lower down the activation energy so you will get your product quickly hai na? so that is how it increases the rate of the reaction now the question here is ma'am here we have the substrate here we have the product what is the meaning of this transition state so transition state is no doubt it is unstable it is unstable it's a temporary structure it's a temporary structure and you can say that the energy of this transition state okay this the energy just a minute temporary structure yes so the energy of this transition state is always more than the substrate and the product just look at this graph right so this side is showing this x axis is showing the progress of the reaction y axis is showing the potential energy so here this part is showing the transition state which is the intermediate stage which is the unstable state right it is the intermediate state it is the unstable state clear bache? so obviously what is going to happen we have the substrate we have the enzyme oh, this enzyme will bind to this substrate right enzyme is having the active site to which a specific substrate will bind so enzyme will do what breaking and making of new bonds so during this process bache, during that breaking and making right so obviously we will have some intermediate structure and it is not mandatory that we will get only one intermediate structure or two it way so we can have different different intermediate structures in between and for that intermediate structures for the structures that are present in between we are calling them as transition state right and it is always unstable and you know that in nature it is our tendency to become stable to come to that ground state so here you can see the transition state with high energy with unstable structure so immediately then it will convert to its final form we will get the product so that is how these enzymes are going to help by lowering down the activation energy is that clear now but you just look at this graph can you see the substrate is having more energy and the product is having less energy can you see so the substrate is having more energy the product is having less energy means during the course of this reaction some amount of energy is released right energy is released it is not utilized it is released right so that type of reactions are your exothermic reaction right what type of reaction it is it is exothermic reaction the heat energy is released clear bache? heat energy is released so this graph is from ncrt so you can see that the progress of reaction the potential energy the substrate here the transition state and here you guys can see the product so this is the activation energy with enzyme this is the activation energy without enzyme which is quite high so this reaction is what it is the exothermic reaction fine it is the exothermic reaction so same way bache, if the energy is utilized like this one substrate is having less energy product is having more energy so means energy is absorbed so that reactions are endothermic reaction clear bache? such reactions are endothermic reaction done sure is it clear yes or no so so that is what we study here in this paragraph that how do enzymes bring about such high rates of chemical conversion okay bache? okay bache? done so substrate has to bind to the active site within a given cleft or pocket the substrate has to diffuse towards the active site so this is the obligatory formation of enzyme substrate complex you know no, obligatory right so it is very specific 
it is not like that to any enzyme any substrate can bind no the specificity should be there i will explain you the enzyme action now right so the specificity should be there so e stands for enzyme so you know that in between a transient uh, so this complex formation is a transient phenomena during uh, the state where substrate is bound to enzyme a new structure called transition state is formed right bache right bache done right so this transition state you can say that it is the altered structure which is present in between so there can be many altered states between the stable stable substrate and the stable product fine between the stable substrate and the stable product done bache and they are always unstable fine they are always unstable because they have very high energy right right bache so all the points I have already explained you about the activation energy as well, about the exothermic and endothermic reaction as well. Now you will read this paragraph after the class. Clear? You will read the, this paragraph after the class. Right? Chalo. So the next part is, bache. Next part is the uh, mechanism of this enzyme action. Like how do they work? Okay. So next that we need to study is the mode of enzyme action. Fine? The mode of enzyme action. It is not given in... NCRT but it is very simple okay so there are two main ways one is lock and key hypothesis one is this lock and key hypothesis right another one is induced fit hypothesis carrier hypothesis now see lock and key it's very simple lock and key you know that for a lock right if you want to open a lock you need a compatible key right you cannot open you cannot just open any uh, lock with any key of course there should be the compatibility there should be the specificity same as the case here right so if you have the uh, substrate or the enzymes right in their case in their case what, what should be there the specificity should be there okay the specificity should be there like here you can see right if the enzyme is having the active site if the enzyme is having the active site and to which the substrate can bind right this reaction reactive site of substrate can bind so obviously you will get Hanji, what will you get you will get that transition states in between and final product will be there right? final product will be there so the complex will form and you will get a final product and as such you will get the enzyme isn't it as such you will obtain your enzyme so this is the lock and key hypothesis there should be the compatibility on the in the active side of that enzyme and the reactive side of substrate which is going to bind with it it's very simple now next is induced fit theory or induced fit hypothesis it is also very easy but as per this as per this induced fit hypothesis the active sites are not the active sites are not static structure. They are not the static structure. Do you know the meaning of this line? Yes. As per this induced and right. As per this induced and fit theory. Right. Bache, active sites are not static structure. They are not static structure. Right. What is, what is the meaning of this? Not static structure means they will undergo conformational changes. Right, they will undergo conformational changes. Right, like let me explain this. Let's say we have one enzyme, okay. So, let's say here you have the, in such case we need to focus on two things. One is that here the enzyme is having two sites actually. Two groups are there basically. In the active site there are two groups. One is buttressing group, okay. One is buttressing group and another one is this catalytic group. Another one is this catalytic group. So, whenever any substrate will try to come closer, right, whenever any substrate will try to come closer, will try to bind here with this enzyme. So, but these buttressing sites, they will undergo conformational changes right they will undergo conformational changes and they will join with the substrate 
okay they will undergo conformational changes so they do not have the same structure they do not have a static stru static structure they will undergo conformational changes so the structure will change in this way that substrate and enzyme they will fit in okay the substrate and enzyme they will fit in so this this part of substrate will join here to this buttressing group for the attachment so buttressing group is the part of enzyme to which the substrate will bind right it is meant for that attachment and the catalytic group here what is the role of this catalytic group here it is it will break and make the bond here in this enzyme okay it is going to break and make the bond here in this enzyme okay right so finally you will get the product so that is how it works these are the mode of enzyme actions clear bache these are the mode of enzyme action so here you can see induced fit right induced fit so active site way one is the active site this is the buttressing group in the surrounding you will get the catalytic group so enzyme changes shape slightly as substrate binds okay so that is why we are saying that active sites are not static they will undergo conformational changes so substrate will be converted to product so here you can see the product will leave the active site of the enzyme okay the product will leave the active site of the enzyme so that's how it works clear clear and done bachche is it clear tell me quickly is it clear next is the inhibition of enzyme action right first of all let's read it from ncrt and then we will talk about the inhibition of the enzyme action so see the nature of enzyme action so you can see enzyme plus substrate they will join you will get enzyme substrate complex in between then enzyme product complex will form so product will get separated and we will obtain our enzyme as such after the reaction and we can use this enzyme for the next cycle okay we can use this enzyme for the next cycle so here you guys can see this catalytic cycle bache you should know these steps in a sequence so the first thing is the substrate binds to the active site of the enzyme fitting into the active site the binding of substrate induces the enzyme to alter its shape right so it is basically induced fit theory the active site now in close proximity of the substrate break the chemical bond of substrate and new enzyme product complex is formed so enzyme releases the product so that is how it works clear bachche this part is very simple okay this part is very simple so next is the factors affecting the enzymatic activity and then we will talk about you know that simple enzyme conjugate enzymes and all right so let's be very 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 quick because after half an hour your wasim sir is going to take the class theek hai so uh so next is your allosteric uh one second so first of all let's talk about the competitive and non competitive inhibition first of all let's talk about the inhibition in the case of enzymes what is the meaning of inhibition do you know about that bachche anything anything do you know about any do you know anything about it then we will talk about the factors affecting the enzyme activity so first of all tell me do you know anything about the inhibitors or the enzyme inhibition tell me do you know anything related to this competitive inhibition and non competitive inhibition this is what we need to discuss inhibition see inhibition means to stop okay inhibition means to stop to stop the activity of the enzyme okay it means to stop the activity of the enzyme so in the inhibition we also talk about the denaturation fine we even discuss the denaturation so what is this denaturation you know that enzymes are basically proteins so if we will increase the temperature right so because of the increase in temperature the 3d structure of the enzyme will change hai na that three dimensional structure of the enzyme will change it will break basically right it will change it will break right and that enzyme will not be functional that will be denatured right it will be inactive isn't it isn't it so that is the denaturation that can also inhibit the enzyme activity now the another is competitive inhibition and the non competitive inhibition and bachche there is one more that is your feedback inhibition allosteric inhibition 
ओके वन इज योर फीडबैक इनहिबिशन एलोस्टेरिक इनहिबिशन इनहिबिशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट ओके एग्जाम्पल्स यस दे कैन आस्क यू द एग्जाम्पल फ्रॉम दिस पार्ट सो आई होप यू नो द मीनिंग ऑफ डी नेचुरेशन सेकेंड इज कॉम्पिटेटिव इनहिबिशन कॉम्पिटेटिव इनहिबिशन हियर द इनहिबिटर इनहिबिटर इज वॉट बच्चे इनहिबिटर इज ऑल्सो अ कंपाउंड राइट एंड योर एंजाइम इज सेंसिटिव टू दिस कंपाउंड इफ दिस कंपाउंड इफ इट बाइंड विद द इंजाइम इट इज नॉट इट इट विल नॉट लेट दैट एंजाइम टू वर्क it will make it ineffective right it will make it ineffective are you getting it so what is an inhibitor inhibitor can be any protein molecule it can be anything which is basically inhibiting which is basically stopping the activity of that particular enzyme it will not allowing that enzyme to work so now when i'm using the word competitive inhibition competitive inhibition here the inhibitor resembles inhibitor resembles the substrate molecule okay here it resembles the substrate molecule and there will be a fine there will be a competition in between substrate and inhibitor to bind to the active site to the active site of enzyme are you getting it to bind to the active site of enzyme so competitive inhibition now here the structure of substrate and the inhibitor is almost same so if the inhibitor will bind to the active site compet uh, the substrate will not be able to bind so obviously the reaction will not be there the reaction will not be there right so here the examples are very important isn't it bachche examples are very important what is very important here here the examples are very important so uh, i hope you know the example of succinic dehydrogenase do you know that succinic dehydrogenase this enzyme right succinic dehydrogenase i hope you remember succinic dehydrogenase in the crab cycle ओके सो इट विल फॉर्म सक्सिनेट टू फ्यूमरेट है ना सक्सिनेट टू फ्यूमरेट सो सक्सिनिक डिहाइड्रोजिनेस सो इट इज इनहिबिटेड बाय मैलोनेट राइट सो मैलोनेट लुक्स लाइक इट्स सबस्ट्रेट इट इज एन इनहिबिटर इट लुक्स लाइक द सबस्ट्रेट सो इट विल बाइंड टू दिस एंजाइम एंड एंजाइम विल नॉट बी एबल टू वर्क सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जाम्पल क्लियर बच्चे सो सक्सिनिक डिहाइड्रोजिनेस इट विल बी इनहिबिटेड बाय द मैलोनेट राइट सो मैलोनेट malonate is basically the structural analog like its structure looks like succi analog of succinate its structure looks like succinate the actual substrate of this enzyme and this enzyme will not be able to work clear bachche clear right so in the case of bacteria so inhibition of folic acid inhibition of folic acid by sulfur drugs so examples are important here clear bachche examples are important here so inhibition of folic acid by sulfur drugs right and even inhibition of cholesterol synthesis inhibition of cholesterol synthesis by statins so they all are the examples of competitive inhibition right they all are the examples of competitive inhibition let me explain this so bachche you know that cholesterol is not good for health increase in cholesterol it is not good for health so we have one enzyme hmg co reductase hmg co reductase so this enzyme forms cholesterol right this enzyme forms cholesterol it is important for cholesterol synthesis now when you talk about the statins right so statins are the drugs that inhibits cholesterol synthesis they are the drugs that inhibit inhibits cholesterol synthesis how that this statin it will bind to this hmg co reductase so if it will bind to this hmg co reductase it will not allow this enzyme to form the cholesterol is that clear it will not enzyme that enzyme to form the cholesterol clear bachche so hmg co a reductase it is hmg co a reductase it is clear bachche 
done so it is a bioactive compound okay done sure sure so another is non competitive inhibition the another example is non competitive inhibition non competitive inhibition so in non competitive inhibition your inhibitor will not compete with substrate here simply inhibitor binds to enzyme inhibitor binds to enzyme and stop its activity simple stop its activity so best example we see in the case of electron transport chain bache where cyanide right cyanide attaches to cyanide attaches to cytochrome oxidase okay cyanide will attach to cytochrome oxidase right right and uh, cyanide stops the activity of cytochrome acid, uh, oxidase just one minute cyanide stop the activity of cytochrome oxidase it will basically bind to that uh, copper containing uh, that copper and the atp synthesis will not be there clear bache so cyanide cyanide will inhibit the activity of cytochrome oxidase it will combine with co uh, with copper and the atp synthase stops atp formation stops clear non competitive inhibition so that's your homework in the chat section you will tell me more examples of the non competitive inhibition it's important okay you have to tell me the examples of non competitive inhibition clear bachche done done okay clear bachche so next is your allosteric inhibition so this non competitive inhibition na mostly it is irreversible uh, ha this non competition inhibition na mostly it is reversible okay it is reversible but yes we have the examples of irreversible non competitive inhibition also so you just need to you just need to give me the examples fine you just need to give me the examples clear bachche clear 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 sure so and uh, next is as i said the next is allosteric inhibition next is what it is allosteric allosteric inhibition so allosteric inhibition is also known as feedback inhibition yeah it is also known as feedback inhibition allosteric inhibition also known as feedback inhibition now which is it is possible in allosteric enzyme so which enzymes are the allosteric enzymes where you know some extra sites known as allosteric sites are present which sites are present here allosteric sites are present here in such mechanism you will see modulation what will you see modulation like when you talk about these allosteric sites na to these sites some enhancers can also bind right some inhibitors can also bind are you getting it are you getting it when you talk about the allosteric sites so allosteric sites mein you will see the modulation will be there right the modulation will be there right so we will see here the you know some inhibitors can be there right like ultimately what is going to happen in uh, allosteric inhibition or feedback inhibition let uh, firstly let's talk about this feedback inhibition sometimes you know that some enzyme some reactions they form uh, from some reactions we used to get some products right the product of that reaction stops the reaction itself right especially in the case of hormones you discuss the feedback inhibition in the case of hormones you people discuss right in the case of hormones you people discuss right that the product of some reactions they inhibit the, that reaction they stop that reaction so it is feedback inhibition the product will bind to that enzyme and will say ki now enough product is there there is no need to form more product clear clear bachche done so allosteric inhibition is there only that part is sufficient for you right so let me show you here so as i said the allosteric sites may basically modulation is there and it is of two type so you can see allosteric inhibition is also there allosteric activation is also there so see enzyme one so it is having one active site it is having one allosteric site so to this allosteric site another compound will bind 
either that compound can increase the reaction, it can activate the reaction or it can stop the reaction. Jaysay, I was giving you an example of inhibition. So, after the enzyme, you are getting a kind of product, that product is stopping the reaction. It is also the feedback inhibition, but here, how, how do you need to understand? See, active site is there to which the substrate will bind and it is having the allosteric site also where the inhibitor will bind. So, when this inhibitor will bind to this allosteric site, it will not allow the substrate to get attached. So, altered active sites will be there. So, this is the allosteric inhibition. This is the allosteric inhibition that in allosteric enzymes where extra allosteric site is there, to this site any compound can join if that compound is inhibitor. So, this inhibitor will uh, change the active sites of the substrate. It will change the active sites here and the substrate will not be able to bind. Another is allosteric activation. Initially in this enzyme, the active sites were altered. When the activator will bind, when the activator will bind to these allosteric sites, so it will make that active sites, it will do some changes in active uh, sites so that substrate can bind. So this is the example of allosteric inhibition and the allosteric activation. Done, bache? Done? Okay. So, sometimes product inhibition is also there as I was explaining that sometimes the product acts like the inhibitor, it will bind to that enzyme and will say stop the reaction. So, that is also one, one of the ways. Okay? That is also one of the ways. So, this is how it works. Bache. So, yes, the factors affecting enzyme activity, I will take another 5 minutes. Okay, I will take another 5 minutes and then I will end the class. So, factors acting affecting enzyme activities. Two factors that you know very well is your temperature and pH. I told you that optimum temperature and pH is required because enzymes are highly specific, right? So, in the case of enzymes, we need optimum. Optimum means when these enzymes, they work best, the best temperature and best pH for enzyme. Such best suitable conditions are the optimum conditions, right? So, now, if let's say, in the case of enzymes, if the temperature is increasing, if you increase the temperature, there will be the denaturation. Same for the pH also. If you decrease the temperature, if you increase the temperature, denaturation. If you decrease, if you decrease the temperature, enzymes will become inactive. So, they need optimum temperature, they need optimum pH. Like which we also discussed now, uh, summer sleep, winter sleep, that there are some animals, Basically, 99% animals, they cannot maintain constant internal conditions, right? They are the conformers. They are not the regulators. They cannot maintain constant internal condition, right? So, their uh, internal conditions, they change with the ambient conditions. They do not have the constant condition. So, when the temperature increases, they go for the, like they go for the different, different sleeps, no winter sleep and the summer sleep. Right, why? Because let's say if that organism is living in a condition where temperature is very high, so the enzymes in their body will be denatured and obviously the reactions will not be there, they will die. And if the temperature is too low, too low, then what is going to happen? The enzymes will be inactive, again the metabolism will not be there, they will die. Now in our case, we are warm blooded, we are endotherms, right? We are hemotherms, right? In our case, what is the scenario? Internal conditions are constant, even if there is a change in the surrounding. Our internal conditions are maintained constant, right? So, because of that, our enzymes are functional and all the processes are going on, right? So, this is the graph that you need to take care when you talk about the temperature and the pH. So, even, see, this is the enzyme activity, this is the pH. Even if you are increasing the pH, the enzyme activity will decrease. Even if you are decreasing the pH, enzyme activity will decrease. So, it needs, it needs optimum conditions, best conditions. Only then it will be functional. Same for the temperature. Same for the temperature. Now, one more thing is substrate concentration. One more thing is what? It is the substrate concentration. So, in the case of substrate concentration, when the substrate concentration increases, right, when it increases initially. So, initially the rate of the reaction will increase and then again the saturation will occur. Now, what's the point here? Let me tell you. Let's say... Let's say there are five enzymes. Let's say there are five enzymes that we are using in a chemical reaction. Like this is a, you know, very 
normal uh, kind of a very basic size example right just to make you understand this part let's say we have five enzyme and these enzymes are having five active sites okay these enzymes are having five active sites okay so basically it can bind to five substrate at a time hai na it can bind to five substrate at a time okay okay so in totality these five enzymes can bind to yes 25 substrate hai na so i am saying that we have total five enzymes and each enzyme can bind to five substrate so in total 25 substrates can attach to these enzymes let's say initially when you started the reaction right when you started the reaction you just added you added five substrate molecule okay you just added five substrate molecule now let's say you are increasing the substrate concentration you made it 10 right 10 substrate and five enzymes are present so obviously initially the rate will increase let's say you made it 15 again the rate will increase you made it 20 again the rate will increase you made it 25 now the stage of saturation will come now what is the saturation here all the enzymes are occupied all the enzymes they are attached to their substrate so even if you are going to increase the substrate concentration it will not affect the rate of the reaction initially the substrate was less enzyme enzymes and the active sites were free at that time so obviously when we were increasing the substrate concentration even rate was increasing but later on what happened right all the all the active sites of the enzymes they are already attached to the substrate they are already bound to that substrate right they are already attached to that substrate they are already bind, bound to that substrate right so with the further increase with the further increase in the substrate concentration there will be no change there will be no change right there will be no change at all the rate will not increase so that is why initially the rate will increase later on normal saturation will be there like this is very simple uh, let's say i'm teaching you very well right so initially for one hour or two hours you are going to enjoy but if i will keep teaching you keep teaching you you will not grasp anything even if i'm teaching in a wonderful way you are not going to grasp it because that is your capability now after 45 minutes after one hour you will not be able to concentrate same is the case here clear same is the case here now we have one michaelis menten constant see here it is given a v max km and all right so in detail it is not given in your syllabus so i will just give you the overview here but there is one equation michaelis menten equation when we talk about the substrate about these enzymes activity we discuss this michaelis menten equation and all so km is basically Michaelis, Michaelis, Menten constant, right? In that equation, this is the constant. Actually, this Km is the substrate concentration. It is actually the substrate concentration at which the velocity is half maximal. Like velocity is half maximal. Like what is the meaning of this? See, look at this graph. so initially when you were increasing the substrate concentration even the velocity of the reaction even that rate of reaction was increasing right the velocity of the reaction and the rate of reaction was increasing but later on and 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 it will increase bachche it will increase only up to this part right so when the rate of the reaction it will attain when this rate will become maximum when this velocity is maximum there is no further there is no further increase right even if you are increasing the substrate concentration there will be no increase in the rate of the reaction because it has attained its maximum value it has attained its maximum value right so initially when you were when you were increasing the substrate the rate was increasing but later on even if you are attaining uh, increasing the substrate the rate will remain same because it has attained its maximum value so when you talk about the km km is the substrate concentration km is the substrate concentration at which this re reaction at which the rate of reaction is half half of the maximum velocity right when it will attain v max by 2 means half of the maximum velocity let's say maximum velocity is 50 so when when it will attain 25 when will it attain 25 so so whenever it will attain the 25 velocity so the at that time the substrate concentration will be considered as km so km is the substrate concentration at which velocity is half maximal at which velocity is half maximal so after the lecture just revise this part again 
you will understand it in in an easy way clear bachche so this is all about the competitive inhibition and all this is all about the concentration of substrate kindly read it from ncrt it's important now bachche when it comes to the classification and the when it comes to the classification and the nomenclature of enzymes you have the trick here ot halil right are right there is one trick it's o t halil in this way you have to remember o t halil o stands for oxido reductase basically there are two uh, main, main six subclasses uh, uh, six classes are there your t stand for transferase rare uh, right which is the trick should be like this o t halil right l stands for ligase and this is na o t halil i stands for isomerase l y stands for ligase h stands for hydrolase right it stands for hydrolase are you getting it oxido reductase transferase hydrolase ligase isomerase ligase right so ot halil it is ot halil it is so o oxido reductase t transferase hydrolases ligases isomerases and the ligases ligases your molecular glues meant for joining isomerases will change one form into another right so here you have the table so major classes of enzymes are six and the examples are given bachche so now your wazim sir is going to take class now so that is why i am ending the session so we are left with that last part the prosthetic group so basically the classification of enzymes simple enzymes and conjugate enzymes so i will record a video right right so we will okay i will record a video of that part theek okay, hai and will post it so you guys can check that video so as of now we are done with this bio molecule part so i'll record the video i'll put it on the channel so we will discuss the classification of enzymes there that's all that you can read with the help of these tables okay even enzymes are uh, even examples are given so i'll share the pdf in the telegram group theek okay? hai i'll share this pdf in the telegram group so guys you can join my personal telegram also love biology by ambika and uh, moreover be the part of neat energize batch because i think till 5th of august you can join this batch later on even entry for the neat energize batch will be closed so join it as soon as possible clear bachche clear and the batch is amazing team is amazing proper revision classes proper doubt classes are there question practice sessions are also there bachche papers are there right mock tests are there time to time so you just name it you'll get it there okay so it is one of the best batches for the neat preparation so be the part of it so here you people can see just check out this video i posted it today tricks to master the plant kingdom so go to the description box there is a link for neat energize batch go and join it okay go and join it so take care bye bye thank you so much for watching stay tuned 